The Jim and Terry Show, podcasting from the Hobbit Hole Studio in downtown, sunny today, Bob Cajun. I'm Terry. I'm Jim. Jim did a lot of praying on his way to the Jim and Terry Show this, this morning. This is true. This is true. Tell us the story of why you spent so oh, much time praying, Jim. No, well, number one, I'm babysitting a dog that don't like me, and I couldn't get it walked out, the, couldn't get it out the door. It wanted to bite me and everything else. I couldn't get him to go, so I left the in a huff then driving here a bird flew into my window followed by a truck throwing a stone into my window and i lost it and i lost it as in expletives expletives were those symbols on your keyboard (laughs) and as the little angel on the right was saying you shouldn't be talking like that the other one was saying let it out let it out feel the dark side the shadow i uh (laughs) sometimes don't like the hidden darkness within a man Ooh, I'm sounding darkness. like I'm on the show. Stay <laughs> spiritual, don't I? Yes, the uh, Carl Jung shadow work stuff. Okay, um, I'm gonna go into things political again, but talk about things because they're related to Canada as well as the United States, and talk about the convictions of Oath Keepers and Proud Boys, extremist, uh, white nationalist organizations in the United States. Three leaders were convicted of seditious conspiracy, a charge that has been very difficult to prove, but the Department of Justice managed to make those cases stick. The old word would be they're traitors. I don't know why it's so hard to see that. I totally see it that way, like I did from day one. Uh, You know, I've even done it within Canadian. I've said, isn't that what they used to call uh, treason? And that was punishable, and I don't want this, but punishable by death. And what they did was to try to overthrow a government, including hanging the vice president. You know what I mean? So what more do you need? I don't understand why it's so difficult. I'm going to take a tangent and go back to a previous podcast where we talked about the CNN town hall. Remember that he was asked, Trump was asked, you know, do you think you should apologize apologize to Mike Pence. Well, Mike Pence is a nice guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he did something wrong. He totally could have voted to overturn the election. He could have sent the results of the ballots back to the states and we would totally have won. Well, that, that to me now, you know, um, that is disturbing to me his train of thought. One is because it's insanity, in my opinion, Mm. where you actually have talked yourself into believing this because I've known people like that. If you believe it, it's got to be true. And you're lying. But you believe it, it's true. And the more you repeat it. Yeah, I don't know what mental problem that is outside of the regular ones like wanting world domination and being the leader of that and narcissistic uh, viewpoints and ego and uh, arrogance. I don't know what other mental condition Mm. could make someone, even to this point, after all that can be seen that happened that day, say that the election was a fraud when it wasn't a fraud. How many many 64 court cases before finally they said, we're not going to do this again. You're just doing, you're being stupid. And Fox was even sued on their false claims. Repeating almost eight hundred million dollars, Terry, and they had to. They the only reason they paid that is because obviously, and we saw some of the emails and stuff. It said right there, "This is nuts. There's no way this, you know." And this is why I really disrespect Fox because they were willing to let it go, and they knew it was a lie that there there had been, you know. To me, that's traitorism, traitorous to treasonous, treasonous. That's treasonous to me as well. Uh, a network throwing your support behind someone who wants to bring down the country. And make no mistake of it, I believe that's what Trump wants to do is bring down now, the country. I was going to start off with these that notion that there are traitors. They are in these organizations that are based on the Second Amendment right to bear arms. They are the survival groups. The Proud Boys are one of them. The Oath Keepers are another. But in Canada, we have... A similar kind of tendency, and we have, I've got on the screen here, I don't know whether you can see it. I can see it. CSIS, our our own version of the FBI, is looking at this phenomenon called ideologically motivated violent extremism. 
and they're looking at the connections between right-wing extremism, as in Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, among several others, in the United States, and funding and influencing right-wing uh, extremism in Canada. And that is concerning to me, and I will go back to the convoy in Ottawa and the Coots border uh, and Windsor, both borders blocked. And talk about Coots especially because that was a real threat of violence, which is what CSIS is looking at. Where does this stuff come from? How does it wind up in Canada? That's easy. You, you got the, People are people. And you still got the same people just going after the same stuff they're going after all the time. Makes them feel included. Why would anybody be a hell's angel? Why would anybody join any gang? It's to be inclusive, to be a part of it, to be that threat. Turns the girls on sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> and, and, and it's all uh, uh, basically, if you want to know, get down to a, a simple word, it's immaturity. So we have violent extremists in Canada because of immaturity. Immaturity. That's an interesting See, style. I'm not talking about people who are right wing, even 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 extreme right wing. I'm talking the people that are willing to take up arms. Those guys that are shooting up malls. They're glorifying something in their poor disturbed minds, you know, mm. that that somehow you know, they go in there like an army man. You know, they've been watching too many video games and they they run in there and they're killing innocent people, not not the enemy in any way shape or form. They're mental, mental problems, but why do you get involved in such things? And they have groups of those people. is because it's the only thing they've got, and they've just gone to evil instead of gone to something so good. And I could go nuts in my preaching yeah, on that. I don't know how much research I've ever done on this. I, I'm just curious because it's now a national security interest in Canada when CSIS flags it. And ideologically motivated, that, that means it is based on your politics. Well, <clears throat> there's that, and we know there's politicians that will sell their soul for the sake of winning. We know that. It'll be in this country, left, right, probably more right, but left uh, probably there as well, which will do whatever you have to do to win and maintain it, and that's just the way life is. It's what people do. They lie, they cheat, they gravel, and then they scrub. And, uh, you know, I have almost a problem with anybody who's a... Uh, advanced up in anything uh, you know I, I have to say to myself how did you get there what did you do who did you destroy who did you throw under the bus mm. to get where you are where you're at it's just i know that's a problem i have but this is where my mind goes so anybody who's a political leader you bet there's some people that really fell under the tires in their journey up that road people who thought that they had it set you know i, re I remember that there was a a position on CFTO radio and there was a spot open and everybody was trying to get that spot filled as a as, as a, a leading announcer anchor, yeah, announcer okay. and out of the blue came this young guy bang right in and I remember one of them saying you little rat because he squeezed in and how did he do that well he played it however he played it and he got the job don't name any names. I'm not naming any <laughs> we, names. We can name it yeah. uh, later. Okay, I'm interested in this because um, I've been seeing, well, you know, I've got views on Republican states and the whole ideology warfare of red state, blue state, and I've sent you some links in terms of poverty rates in red states versus blue states, um, COVID infections, red states versus blue states. So it, the ideology comes in a whole bunch of ways that you can slice it and analyze it. But one of them was the number of times Republican politicians, and I'm thinking the most recent one I saw was Sarah Huckabee Sanders posing with Enrique Terrio, who's, I believe, the Proud Boys leader. And how many Republicans have been photographed with these ideologically motivated extremists? You know what? We know it's just to advance your own life. We know that at anybody's cost. That's my, my opinion. It would be interesting to see a TV series or something of let them have it. Let them, what would the world look like where everybody has an Uzi, a kid going to school, 
I mean, we know the man's brain doesn't develop until he's 21. Scientifically, that's what they say. But you'll give a gun to an 18-year-old. Stupidity in its highest. I don't mean hunting. That's a different thing. But, uh, you know, a, 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 an assault rifle, you know, to go in and mass murder people. That's the story I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So imagine a society the way, say, uh, what's her name, Marjorie Taylor Greene would like it. Imagine that. Someone should do a TV series like that. You've got it. Everybody packs a, a, a gun. How many people would accidentally be shot? And then what's the defense? Oh, no, he was going to kill me. Stand your ground. I know he was going to kill me. And besides that, I was in line first. You know, it'd be interesting to see a series like that. Like, what do you really want, you bunch of blabbers? You're blabbing away, and your world is not going to be the beautiful little enlightened world you think you're going into. You know, you need to really talk to some grounded, sensible people who've been there and understand their rules and laws and regulations are all for a reason. So is gun control a moot point? It's never going to become something? Trudeau wants to make more amendments and to regulate guns in Canada. The Conservatives don't want that. That's an infringement upon your rights, so even though we don't have a Second Amendment. I don't think you should have any right to have a gun. And I'm a Conservative. I don't, why do you need a gun? A hunting gun? Fine. Get your license. Get your license. Be registered. Be checked. That you're not mental. And, and have I, one. And you, you only got X amount of shots within that gun. Simple as that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't, nobody goes after a deer rapidly shooting it. You understand? With a clip. So you don't need all these clips. Yeah. Make it so it takes five minutes to put another clip in. You know what I mean? Make it complicated to put another clip in or whatever you, you need to do. But for me to have a gun of any kind in my house... No, I don't think, not even to defend my home. No, that's why we have police. Put locks on your doors, alarm systems in your cars. Don't be shooting people who accidentally go in your car. Wow, yeah. Jeepers, you'd think uh, I was a lefty. Uh, you, but I would say it's common sense. <laughs> it is common sense. Don't it is. shoot people. Yeah. Don't you think so? Do that. The Jim and Terry Show, where we're not shooting anybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>